William Ruto has clearly failed and there is no doubt about that. And Kenyans should not spend a lot of time debating whether he has succeeded or not or whether he's going to succeed. This is a man who was destined to fail and he has clearly failed. In a scale of 1 to 10, I will give William Ruto a 1 over 10. He has failed badly. In this video, I want us to listen to Lord Dunstone Omari, after which I'll highlight on some issues he has talked about. Listen to this. Oh, the only safe haven for Kenya Kwanza is not to appear where people are, is to disappear to Germany, to Saudi Arabia, and to Parliament where the Kenyans are not. It is bad, Kimi Umana. All right, uh, saying Kimi Umana, I'll come back with the Honorable Basila. Allow me. We haven't seen a former president, His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, since the last national delegation. The former head of state yes. has been forced by Kenyans to come back to the political front by the clueless government of uh, Kenya Kwanza because it's like they were not present at Kasarani when President Uhuru Kenyatta handed over the instruments of power. They still think President Uhuru Kenyatta is the president of this country. So every issue is being talked about is Uhuru Kenyatta. <clears throat> Uhuru Kenyatta handed over power. Mm -hmm. But because they are clueless, and clueless in the sense that they, he pumped in incompetent people to sit in positions of making decisions from cabinet to directorate to presidential appointments to ambassadors, the country seems not to be moving anywhere. And that is why out of failure, complete failure to run the country, they are now talking about it is, it, this was caused by President Uhuru Kenyatta. So that is why I said that a clueless government, those who cannot be able to govern because they have lumped the people who are incompetent, cannot at all deliver. For example, the president himself was in uh, Bomet, mm -hmm. his own tough. The Minister for Energy was chased badly. And that, that, and, that, uh, and that tells you mm. that things are not working. I myself, Anki, on Saturday I was in the president's county. In Eldoret was in Gishu, Sugoi? in a church. No, 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 next to Sugoi. Okay. I don't know the constituency, but, uh, but I was in a church at Eldoret, mm. which is around, it was around five kilometers from Eldoret town, uh, at a church place called uh, Quinet, uh, an SDA fundraising church. And it was tense. You could see the politicians of that region trying to tell the people, please, this is our government. Please, this is our government. Please don't chase us. Please. It was bad. And I looked at it and I said, if you are telling people like this, what will happen at Bumet? They got it right. So the Kenyans are very clear. Right. It will not, the prices and the pump do not know. This is a Kenya Kwanza person. This is an Azimio person. The food prices do not care. Whether this is a Kalenji, this is a Kikuyu, this is a Kisi. So the reality is downing on President William Ruto. And that is why you see the only safe place for the president to be is out of the country. He's, he's better safe there than facing the people in this country. Last week we gave Ruku a challenge. Go to the people. The president tried to go to the people in Bomet. He got it. All right. So the only safe haven for Kenya Kwanza is not to appear where people are, is to disappear to Germany, to Saudi Arabia, and to Parliament where the Kenyans are not. It is bad, Kimi Umana. Yes. The lawyer has explained the remarks very well, and I want to highlight on some issues he has talked about. He's basically saying Ruto's best bet is not to go where Kenyans are. And he has given examples of what happened when William Ruto tried going to where Kenyans are. In Mombasa, he was heckled. In Dagoretti, Nairobi, he was heckled. 
in Kirinyaga, he was given a very cold reception. In Bomet just two days ago, his cabinet secretary, Chirichir, was badly heckled and forced to cut his speech. All these are events that have happened in the recent days. And I personally believe that that's the way Kenyans should actually be dealing with incompetent leaders. When a leader campaigns that if you elect me as your president, I will do A, B, C, D. Upon being elected or upon being the president, he does the exact opposite. And instead of sitting down to deliver, he comes to you campaigning for another election while he has not even fulfilled on the things he promised. I believe Kenyans should wake up and scale up their rejections of such incompetent leaders. It's foolhardy for Kenyans to entertain liars masquerading as leaders. It's a fact Ruto is a very big liar and I'm saying that without any fear of contradiction. There are so many instances that proves this is a very big liar. And if you look at the current political class in the country, I don't think there is any politician who matches William Ruto when it comes to lies. And just as I've been saying, Ruto can lie straight on your face. You catch him lying, he doesn't care. He will lie to you again and again and again. He doesn't care. Kenyan should scale their rejection of such kind of incompetent leaders. Kenyan should not entertain them at all. Now William Ruto is in Germany. And just the other time, he was from Saudi Arabia. This is basically a traveling politician. In just under one year, just, let's say in just slightly in, in one year, he has made over 41 trips. Over 41 trips. And all these trips are not bringing any meaningful development to the country. In fact, tax, taxpayers' money being wasted in these useless foreign trips. The other time he said he was cutting on travel expenses. Hardly even before the ink dried, he was out of the country. And now he is in, in Germany. A lying president, ladies and gentlemen. So Kenyans should wake up not to allow that. As I conclude, Ruto is assuming Kenyans are fools. And now let me put this directly to the mountain and to the Kalenji nation. Wake up before it's late. Already I've started seeing some signs of awakening in those two areas. But speaking to some, some are still politically naive. I think it's incumbent upon those who have woken up to also open the eyes of these ones who are still sleeping because some do not understand exactly what's happening. They don't know the attributes of a good leader. When you see a leader clearly lying, that's not a good leader. When you see a leader using the church pulpit to spew hate, to attack other politicians, that's not a good leader. When you see a leader encouraging corruption, so far we've been told that 17 billion Kenya shillings was withdrawn from the consolidated fund illegally and given to some person to import oil into the country. That's corruption. Corruption being supported 
by top leaders in the government. We still remember the, the Kenyan government, or our Kenyan government, lost about 10 billion in the edible oil importation. We are some rogue elements within the government gave some cooks the express authority to import edible oil into the country tax-free. 10 billion Kenya shillings was lost as a result of that. So as time goes by, corruption is increasing in the government. And such a government, it's a moribund government, a government that is clearly collapsing. And we are waiting for that day because it's clear this is a government headed for a collapse. Unless Kenyans have all turned to be fools. Let me stop with there, ladies and gentlemen. If you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give this video a like. Any other person watching us and you feel you want to support our forum, for the forum to continue growing strong and stronger, contact me through that number or feel free to send your chai to that number. Let's meet in our next analysis. Thank you.